I had laser eye surgery in December 2020 and I'm here today to tell you exactly what to expect on the day of your surgery. So this surgery has been one of the biggest of my life so far and I'm sure it is for many as well. Leading up to my treatment, like you probably are today, I was trying to find the videos and just blogs and things online to prepare me for really what to expect on the day. So what I did is literally took a pen and paper and I wrote everything down, even the surgeon was like, I can tell you're an accountant. I literally want to be able to give you every single detail, all the timings, all wrapped up in this one video, so that's what I'm here to do today. If you haven't seen my previous videos, I did go with Optical Express for my laser eye surgery. I went with the Laze Ek eye design treatment, and there's more details about that in that video that I did just mention. And I have already shared a very detailed video about what to expect on the consultation itself, so do also check that one out if you're interested in that. So if you are very early into your laser eye surgery journey and you are looking for a referral from a friend, that can be me. So do check out the details in my description below and I'll let you know how to get your hands on that voucher. As mentioned, my surgery was in 2020. So 19th of December, 2020 to be specific at 10 past nine in the morning. So if you can't tell from my accent, I am from Birmingham and the Birmingham clinic for Optical Express wasn't actually open yet so I did actually go to the nearest clinic to me for laser eye surgery and that was in Nottingham. Let's start off with the absolute basics. What do you need to take with you and what do you need to know for your laser eye surgery day? So number one, and something that some of you might not like, but you are not able to wear any makeup, perfume, or deodorant during your surgery. You are then also advised to wear loose clothing. And now the next thing I really just cannot stress enough, but you definitely need to take some sunglasses with you. So as you can see in this picture, I took Ray-Bans with me. And to be honest, they didn't really block out the sun as much as I really needed. So do make sure you can just get some really dark sunglasses if possible. And these will also come in handy in the next couple of days after your surgery, especially if you're having LASIK. So if you do want to know more about the LASIK recovery period, it is honestly just so much different to the LASIK recovery. And I cannot stress that enough. We'll have a video coming on that soon. So do make sure to subscribe. You definitely do want to watch that one before make sure to take all of the forms that you need to with you so perhaps that might be optical express specific but i'm pretty sure others would probably also have some forms that you need to fill in and take with you too so of course make sure you've got your transport arranged you obviously cannot drive after your surgery and it will probably also be very difficult on public transport so because my surgery was during covid nobody could come with me which was really sad but my boyfriend now fiance did drop me off and pick me up after which was really useful so finally and a very big one is to take pain killers and really just have them with you. You are during your surgery given some anaesthetic drops and hopefully those do help but they do actually wear off after an hour or so after your surgery and so you do want to make sure you are hopefully already on some painkillers to really just minimize any kind of disruption. That is also why you are just advised to nap straight afterwards as well. Let's just move straight onto the timings and what to expect for the day. So as I mentioned my surgery was booked for 10 past 9 in the morning so you would actually think that you're pretty much going straight away, but that is not the case. So for the first actual 25 minutes, so from 10 past nine to 35 past nine, I was actually just sat kind of waiting and had my forms already. So any forms that I hadn't completed from my initial consultation that I did need to bring with me, I was just given that time to just sit and kind of fill them in there. So these included an informed consent forms, a terms and conditions document, and I also had to write out a confirmation of declaration. So something you also need to be aware of is that a witness declaration is also required. So that is again why it's good to have someone with you. So there's actually kind of a lot to read here as well. So it is important to just go through, but I will just tell you now that some of the statements that you might read are kind of scary, especially when it's saying things like any of the costs that you need for potentially having glasses after the treatment or any extra surgeries aren't covered or included. So thankfully I didn't need this, but that is really just something definitely to be aware of. So the next 20 minutes, 9.35 to 9.55, I was then taken for more eye examinations and scans. So these are ones that you should already be familiar with from your laser eye surgery consultation. So again, more details can be found in this video here. So I had to redo that blue light test and also the hot air balloon test, but I didn't need to do that air puff test. 
And no, those are clearly not the technical terms. I am not an optician, I'm an auditor. If you are interested in what that is, do check this video out and you can find out a lot more there. If you do want the technical terms as well, you can find that in that laser consultation video. So as I mentioned, I did have eye design, which is only offered by Optical Express. And that is one of the key reasons I did choose Optical Express for laser eye surgery. But I then needed to do an additional scan for this eye design treatment. So eye design is meant to make it a lot more precise. This is there then where one eye at a time, you do just need to look into this target and it will just take scans of your eyes. So at the time, I think my pupils were quite big and it was maybe getting in the way. So that was kind of an issue and I had to kind of keep redoing it a few times. So that is also kind of nothing really to worry about. It's either due to having too little light or just focusing too much. So once complete then your data is just saved onto this USB and then that can be put into the eye design technology for your surgery. Right, so now for the next 40 minutes, 9.55 to 10.35, I was literally just waiting. So there were actually quite a few periods of where you are just really waiting around. So like I said, my appointment was from 10 past nine and I really thought I'd maybe be done within the hour or so, but that just wasn't the case because of all this waiting. You of course need to remember that a lot of other people are booked in on the same day as well to have their surgery. But all this waiting, it can of course be boring, especially if you're on your own like I was. So it's just worth taking something with you to keep you occupied, maybe distracted. So yeah, as mentioned, my wait was because someone was in front of me, but then after they were done, what I meant then is that I could then go through to see the surgeon. I then had a five minute meeting with the surgeon, so 10.35 to 10.40. So the surgeon, he was extremely friendly and welcoming, which was just really reassuring. So at this point, the surgeon will definitely look at all of your new scans from the day. And you do really need to be aware that you can actually still be turned down for laser surgery at this point. So if there's anything that comes to the surgeon's attention, they may actually turn you away. It is then just definitely important to just be mentally prepared for that. But then also it is kind of reassuring because you do really make sure that you are getting a second look at. So I had scarring on my eye from childhood. And so that of course is something that could maybe have complications, but fortunately it was fine. So this is also where the surgeon as well can confirm what type of laser eye surgery you're having. So I have touched on them here and mentioned this already. But this is the difference between LASIK and LASIK. So LASIK was most appropriate for me because of that scarring. But had I not had that, I could have done LASIK and it would have just been a much smoother recovery. So like I said, do subscribe and a video is coming on that soon. So after talking me through what would actually happen during the procedure, which really is only 10 to 15 minutes long, he then also let me know what happens with the eyes during the day of laser eye surgery. And I did also have the opportunity to ask any more questions. But of course, if you know me, if you've seen some of my videos or my blogs, you know I go into so much detail that at this point I'd already pretty much asked everything and didn't really have anything further to ask. So it was just back to the waiting room and then I will be going in for my life-changing laser eye surgery. However, there was another 30 minute period of waiting. So again, I was quite bored, even went to the toilet. Sorry if that's too much information. But I was just really trying to kill time at this point. Yeah, after half an hour, I was called in. So I was called in at 10 past 11. That is a whole two hours after my appointment was booked for. And it did only last 15 minutes. So when I entered, I was able to just put my things down, put my bag down, take my coat off. And I was greeted by the team as well as the surgeon again. So at this point, they do just kind of ask you for your full name, your date of birth. They do just check some details. And I also actually got asked if I had some back conditions, which I did think was maybe a bit weird but then it does make sense because you do need to lie down for your procedure. I was also asked if I had any allergies, but fortunately I didn't. But if you do, it might be worth bringing that up beforehand just to kind of see how it will impact you on the day perhaps. So I then just had to tie my hair up, low ponytail. I put a hairnet on, they put bandages on and kind of just cleaned up the area really, just so my eyes are just accessible. So after all of this quick little setup, I then just had to get in a position where my eyes were kind of directly below where they needed to be. So I guess at this point, obviously I didn't get it right the first time. So I was just kind of moving up and down the chair a bit and just rejigging, trying to get it right. But with my surgery, one eye was corrected at a time. So one eye would have a bandage on and the other would be like ready to go. So for the eye that is gonna be treated, it is literally just like lipped open. It's really uncomfortable when they first do it. And you obviously just wanna try and blink. So you're like trying to keep your eye open with these clips, but your eyes are just going like this. 
um, it kind of took a bit to get used to but it did of course eventually kind of clip on so the surgeon will just get to work and honestly it just happens so quickly I just remember about 10 anesthetic drops going in there were just so many drops and do you remember I did have Lasek so it might be different for you if you're having Lasek but I'm pretty sure you will still of course have those drops they literally just like flood your eye with these drops. So it's all running down your kind of face and into your hair at this point. But then I was also just told to kind of just look up at the orange dot and just kind of focus on it. So it was like this kind of orange like blinking dot that you do just look at. But as I said, Lasek, it involves kind of moving the layer using this like diluted alcohol solution. So what I could kind of see as well is I had this like metal kind of stick like with a little loop on the end that was kind of just like moving it but this really wasn't anything to worry about it was actually quite painless but this is then when the surgeon told me that okay they're gonna put the laser machine on now it'll be for like the next kind of 30 seconds and that it will be quite noisy and a bit smelly too so the smell it's kind of like you know like a laser hair removal kind of smell like that kind of burning well not burning but it is just that type of laser smell and oh my god the noise but the noise was just a bit mad it was like this huge kind of engine motor thing kind of coming on and then it was i mean i want to say it sounds like a machine going with like thick, thick. <laughs> it was well yeah it was kind of like a machine but, but anyway what i'm trying to say is that it was just quite noisy it was literally just like shooting in your eyes well in your eye because it's one at a time but yeah it was honestly like these orange laser beams just like going into your eye for 30 seconds so then after the laser's complete you'll still then get more drops put into your eye so I actually can't remember as well if this bit happened before the laser eye surgery, but it definitely did happen after. And this is where you're kind of still conscious and you can just feel the surgeon just moving parts of your eye. But of course, you've had the anesthetic drops. It's not painful, but it is just a bit weird. And this is honestly just where it gets scary because of course, one minute it's like your eyesight's a bit blurry. Then it seems to be corrected. But then what freaked me out the most is just at one point I felt like my eyes just went completely black. And obviously they're thinking, oh my God, I literally can't see. But it really just didn't last very long at all. And it did of course come back, thank God. So there were actually a few occasions as well during the surgery where my eye actually did kind of roll back. And the surgeon would just tell me to kind of just, you know, like snap out of it and just bring it back. I don't honestly know how it happened. I think I was just really focusing on the orange dot and it subconsciously just happened. I'm not sure, but I mean, it didn't impact anything and it was fine. And then the last part, and this is for LASIK, is where the healing kind of contact lens is put on your eye. So it's sometimes referred to as like the contact lens bandage. And then this is because a cornea layer is kind of peeled off. So it does help it just to like peel back over. So then of course, after I did the right eye, which was first, we then moved on to the left eye. It was honestly just completely the same. And it was all just really quick. And throughout the whole surgery, the surgeon was just talking me through everything that he was doing. And that was just honestly really reassuring as well. And just very helpful to know. So then once it was complete, I was just kind of asked how I got on and how I found it. And then, do you know what, it was weird because my eyesight already immediately saw an improvement. It was not 2020, but it was definitely improved. So like I touched on in this video, my eyesight was pretty poor, so it was minus five pretty much in both eyes. So there was quite a bit of an improvement to be had anyway. So straight after my surgery, I pretty much just put the sunglasses on straight away and I avoid kind of looking around too much and trying to really see things because I just didn't want to strain my eyes. So from 11.25 to 11.30, so straight after my surgery, I was essentially just taken into the room of pretty much across from where the surgery was. And that was into a room with the nurse and this is all about now aftercare. So it's so important to go with a provider who does give you good aftercare. During this meeting with the nurse is when I was handed all of my drops, I was handed an eye mask, I was handed like you know a page which talks about all of the recovery and things that you need to do. So what was actually quite scary as well is that you're given your eye drops but then you're also given some like emergency eye drops if your pain gets really bad and thankfully I did not need to use those. But I mean, it is just something again to be aware of. I'll also be sharing a lot more details about all of the different drops and things in the next video relating to laser eye surgery. So do make sure you subscribe and check that out. And something else I'll be sharing is something that is very crucial actually. So during this appointment with the nurse, I was actually told lots of things that I was not aware of at all before having the surgery. And that was things such as like, you know, you can't wait lift for four weeks following your surgery. I just had no idea about that. If you see my DIY home gym video, then you know that that is something that I do like to do. 
So yeah, there will definitely be a video about that as well. So do make sure to subscribe. So now after seeing the nurse, finished at about 11.30 and then I could go down to then book my next appointment and this is my first aftercare appointment and so what you can see actually is from my 10 past 9 appointment I actually finished at about 9.35 and so that really is about two and a half hours long essentially so do make sure that you are just giving yourself enough time if someone is picking you up afterwards and you probably can also just then message them quickly after the surgery although you are actually meant to avoid screens for 24 hours spoiler alert to that next video but yeah you probably can just quickly drop them a message then as there's still probably time to come and get you yeah as i said i had lasik and i had those contact bandage lenses put in my eye and so this was booking the appointment to have those you know to be removed so then following that i was literally free to go i do just want to add here actually as well that i was booking my next appointment and I of course would think that I'd get a confirmation email but I actually got nothing at all come through and then I did have to follow up with Optical Express which also was not ideal given I just had the surgery and was in a lot of pain so yeah I had to call them up and then actually book it and make sure I got that confirmation and this is just something that I did actually experience with Optical Express a fair bit actually where I was just having issues kind of booking their appointments I think I booked one it ended up being for the wrong month just little things like that and that's kind of where I found was the downside with Optical Express. Besides this though, I really just can't fault them. I'm honestly just so pleased how it went. I think I've now got 2020, which is just perfect, more than I could have asked for. Overall, I am glad I chose them. So do again, check this video out if you haven't chosen your provider yet. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, then please give me a like. Any questions, drop them in the box below. I'd be happy to answer those. I do also have some footage from the day of my laser eye surgery and that is in the full blog so do click that link and you can go and see those and that'll just give you a bit more insight into the day itself. As always I will be back with more videos every single week so do make sure you subscribe and hopefully you'll see me again soon. Thanks!